Hola chicos, bienvenidos a esta clase de inglés que es una conversación completa en inglés entre mi amigo Will y yo, en cual vas a practicar tu escucha en inglés enormemente. Will es de Londres, Inglaterra, tiene una historia muy chévere, es actor, emprendedor, experto en fútbol y además domina tres idiomas, el español, inglés y el francés. Entonces lo que quiero que hagas en esta clase es simplemente relajarte, escuchar y disfrutar. A medida que pase la conversación voy a hacer pausas y explicar ciertas expresiones, verbos, palabras que estamos usando en la conversación para que tú puedas seguirla un poquito más fácil. Mi recomendación para practicar a lo máximo tu escucha es empezar colocando subtítulos en inglés. Y si hay algunas partes que son muy difíciles por entender, puedes rebobinar y poner subtítulos en español. Está totalmente bien. Recuerda, Will es un nativo de inglés de Inglaterra. Tiene un acento muy especial. Entonces va a ser un poquito difícil entender todo. Y eso es normal. No te preocupes. Sigue viéndolo. No te importa si no puedes entender todo. Es natural. Y para ir mejorando, puedes volver a ver este video cuantas veces como quieras. Así que, espero que estés emocionado. Yo soy Kale Anders, tu coach de inglés y tu sueco favorito. Let's go. Will, thank you so much for taking your time to come here and have a conversation with me. You're welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm a, I have to be honest, I'm a little nervous. I, I haven't done uh, any camera work for a while. So yeah. Let's see how it goes. And you used to be an actor. Yes, before I came to Colombia. Wow. Like a uh, stage actor or movies and stuff? Yeah, so I came to... I can't, I'd love to have done movies. I had, I once had an audition for Game of Thrones, which uh, really with a hundred other people. For what role? Uh, until what? I've never actually seen Game of Thrones, which might have something to do with why I didn't get the part. Mm. Um, but then you know, it's, you know, not everyone. You don't have to have always seen the movie. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I mainly did um, fringe theatre, regional theatre, and commercials. Fringe is la palabra para el corte cabello que es así. En americano decimos banks, pero fringe theatre es un tipo de teatro que se hace afuera de los institutos grandes, que es un poquito más pequeño y no tan tradicional en el estilo. Eso fue el tipo de teatro en cual Will estaba actuando en Londres. I mainly did um, fringe theatre, regional theatre, and commercials. It's called fringe theatre. Fringe, as in like. A fringe. Fringe. A fringe theater. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it's how, for, I've heard like just indie. Like, how does that compare to like indie movies and things like that? It's just yeah. it's like completely different. Yeah, I mean, theater is completely different than movies to start with. Mm. Um, and, you know, we do a lot, of, I did a lot of short films. I used to go in, I did a lot of work with the film school, so like the London International Film School. Uh, the National Film and Television School, where they require actors for their students, which yeah. is a really good way to uh, generate showreel footage because all actors need showreels. You yes. know, it's like a catch-22. Like it, to get a movie, to get TV, to get commercials, you need to have done, you need to have some footage so they can see you. Yeah. Um, but how do you get that footage? You know. Yeah. So short films and the film schools are a really good way to achieve that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're completely you know, they're different. They're different practices, different skills. Like. What's great about theatre is that it's, you know, the, you start the show and you have like two hours. Ahora, una gran diferencia entre la pronunciación en inglés de Inglaterra y el inglés de Estados Unidos son las T's. Por ejemplo, theatre. Así se dice en Estados Unidos. En Inglaterra se dice theatre. Theatre. Suelen pronunciar o articular la T dentro de palabras. Mientras en el inglés de Estados Unidos suelen ser más sutiles y sonar más como una D. Theatre. Theatre. What's great about theatre is that it's, you know, the, you start the show and you have like two hours and it's one big journey and adrenaline rush and you kind of, you know, you kind of hit, you kind of, you, your, your emotional level kind of goes through yes. the journey of the play. Yeah. And obviously film and um, TV, you're kind of, is cut up. So you kind of exactly. have to generate what's, you know, you, you don't even film it in order necessarily. So yeah. you're like, well, how do you generate the, the emotion for that scene? Or how do, what is, what is, where is my character at this moment? Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're, they're all different things. Going to plays is a big, a big thing in Sweden. Oh, especially, yeah? especially in the summer. I used to go to so many plays with my, with my parents. Plays, play, significa jugar. Pero play también puede ser un espectáculo en un teatro, a play. Going to plays is a big, a big thing in Sweden. Oh, yeah? Especially in the summer, I used to go to so many plays with my with my parents. So how did you get into that? Uh, well, how did I get into that? Yeah, I started. So I started originally. I went to art college, and then I set up a small business after I left art college, um, making DVDs and do it. Which is kind of like a. This is completely different, but it was like you know, it's kind of like a technical aspect to that and a creative aspect to that. Yeah, and uh, which I really liked. But then I guess at some point I felt. I always felt like I was quite shy when yeah. I was at school, yeah. and um, and I wanted to do an acting class, not to become an actor, just to 
try acting and just to see what it felt like. Yeah. And I think that's why I like, and I just really, I really liked it. I mean, I liked the standard, like that you feel so alive. Yeah. Like, you know, when you're up in front of an audience and it can be like three people in an acting class, yes. you know, or a thousand people in a theater and you just feel that, that intense, alive feeling. Yeah. And um, that's what I really liked about it. And yeah. I was thankfully good enough to then go on and get some professional work and get yeah. an agent and stuff like that. Oh, wow. But um, it just started as something I wanted to try to yeah. see what it was like and yeah. to, to test myself and to not feel so shy. And, okay. You know. Wow. And then I learned that all these kind of like these films I'm having now, feeling like slightly nervous or whatever. Yeah. It's all kind of good stuff. I yes. I can use that. Exactly. Um, to put, to make that scene yes. come alive. Yeah. And stuff, you know. And so you, you, were, you studied to become an actor or you studied uh, acting. Where, where are you from in the UK? London. London. Okay. Yeah. Where are you from? La frase para preguntar de dónde eres. Where are you from? En este caso pregunté, where are you from in the UK? En el Reino Unido. The UK es el Reino Unido. Igual como decimos the US para referirnos a los Estados Unidos. The United States. Where, where are you from in the UK? London. London. Okay. Yeah. And then, what did you do after that? That's when you started working with the football stuff? Or that was way later? So, no, so... Yeah, so I was studying acting part time. Okay, because I already had like I had another business which I was which yeah. I was running, and then um, once I transitioned more into acting, so I, I merged my business with another company. To merge, unir, I merged my company with another company. Uní mi empresa con otra empresa. Eso es muy común en el mundo de los negocios. Empresas compran acciones en otras empresas y se unen a una sola empresa. To merge, unir. I merged my business with another company to sort of free up my time yeah and i started doing more acting roles but you then have more free time as well yeah and so the football uh stuff came along because the football stuff came along las cosas del fútbol vinieron came along is el pasado de come along come along significa venir o presentarse las cosas del fútbol se presentaron en su vida and so the football uh stuff came along because yeah so it's fantasy football yes which is utterly geeky game explain fantasy football to everyone's listening <laughs> <laughs> well there's like um there's a, there were 11.4 million people playing fantasy premier league last year premier league is la mejor división de fútbol en inglaterra premier league fantasy premier league is un juego online que es muy grande sobre todo en europa donde cada temporada creas un equipo virtual colocando diferentes jugadores de diferentes equipos en tu equipo personal. Dependiendo de cómo van jugando esos jugadores en los juegos reales, ganas puntos y compites con tus amigos, extraños en internet, lo que sea. Es grandísimo, es súper chévere. Fantasy Premier League last year. And the winner was a guy from Azerbaijan. So it's like completely worldwide. But it's a, sim it's a simple game. So it's basically uses uh, statistics from the game. Yes. And then you pick 11 players, like out of all the players in the Premier League. Yes. Uh, or you pick a squad of 15, but 11 to start. Yes. And they score points based upon the things that they achieve in the match. Like exactly. Like a goal or an assist or whatever. Throughout the entire season. Throughout the season, yeah. So you pick it, you select your team every week. You select your team. Yeah. So you have a squad. So that's the thing. Like it's a fantasy squad. It's yeah. You know, Are you select a new squad every week? No, it's your squad, but you can make transfers. Okay. And then you have chips, so you could select a new squad. You could select a new squad. Cuando alguien dice you could, quieren decir tú podrías. You could select a new squad. Tú podrías elegir un nuevo equipo, en este caso. So you could select a new squad. Yeah. And like twice you have a wild card, so you can okay. change your entire team. And okay. I mean, let's just get into it. All my friends play fantasy football, but I just right. I haven't had the time. I haven't had the time. No he tenido el tiempo. All my friends play fantasy football, but I just right. haven't had the time to do it. It's very wise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I was quite good at that. Like out of, uh, I have two, twice I finished in like the top 5,000 managers which out of several million is, is, is wow. was impressive. I was pleased with that. I was pleased with that. Eso me agradó. Eso me hizo feliz. I was pleased with that. If I was pleased with that. And I started writing for a website that does stuff with fantasy football. And then that was kind of like a part-time role. And then I started getting more football-related, fantasy football-related work through them. Uh, and so when I moved to Columbia and I stopped acting because yeah. uh, I don't really know how I do it here as a yeah. non-native speaker. But yeah, then I was really lucky that they kind of put me on full time and I yeah. do entire football stuff yeah now. 
Oh, that's amazing. Um, which is really fun, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're so lucky to be able to live here in this fantastic yes. country, working online with things that we love doing. Completely. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And so why did you choose Colombia? Why did you choose Colombia? ¿Por qué elegiste Colombia? Cuando hacemos preguntas en inglés, usamos el verbo de ayuda, do. Why do you move to Colombia? ¿Por qué te mudas para Colombia? Y si queremos hacer esta pregunta en el pasado y preguntar ¿Por qué te mudaste a Colombia? Simplemente conjugamos ese verbo de ayuda. De do a did. Why did you come to Colombia? ¿Por qué viniste a Colombia? And so why did you choose Colombia? Oh, well, uh, and that's interesting because I was going to a few, I started um, digital nomad in, if you like. So yes, kind of digital nomad, nómada digital. Una persona que viaja por todo el mundo trabajando desde su computadora. No tiene casa, no tiene hogar. Es una nómada, ¿verdad? Digital. Yo fui eso como por unos meses, pero luego me encantó Colombia demasiado que lo hice mi hogar. I started um, digital nomad in, if you like. So yes, kind of even while... Yeah, this, so this kind of stemmed from actors as well. I think there was like um, one of one of the uh, difficult things with actors, you go to a lot of auditions, yeah. and, you know, a lot of commercial auditions. And there was something, I went to a class once through Equity, which is the acting union in the UK. Okay. And it talks about, um, this guy was talking about the cultural diet, how to improve the cultural diet so that you kind of enrich yourself as a person because when you're an actor like that, what you have transmits through. Exactly. You know? And so I started going off. It started going off. Empezó a funcionar. Funcionar, empezar, coger fuerza, etc. And so I started going off and I thought, well, okay, this is great. I've always loved traveling. I kind of could work, do the football stuff on my laptop. So I went to Gran Canaria, which was Las Palmas, yes. which was a really uh, digital nomad hotspot. And there were like co-working places, like go there and work in it. And it was great. I spent like two, two months there th in, a, in the winter months. Yes. And I'd come back and go to auditions in the UK. And I was like... Everyone's had this really cold winter in the UK and, yeah. and uh, you know, they go to auditions, give them like, God, it's a vitamin D or whatever it is. <laughs> and I'm going to come in refreshed from these, from this journey that I'd done, from these people that I met and the experiences that I'd had. And uh, we'll go into the auditions and be like different energy, but you know, it's just coming through. So I, I landed quite a few commercials after I started doing that. I landed quite a few commercials. Empezamos con I landed. En este contexto no significa yo aterricé, aunque es la traducción directa. I landed también puede significar yo obtuve. Por ejemplo, I landed that job. Yo obtuve ese trabajo. I landed the girl of my dreams. Yo obtuve la chica de mis sueños. Entonces, I landed quite a few, bastantes. Quite a few, bastantes. Commercials, comerciales. O sea, yo obtuve bastante comerciales como actor. I landed quite a few commercials after I started doing that. So yeah. it's a really good acting tip. And at Medellin, it's something I, you know, I heard about Medellin from the people who are in Las Palmas. Yeah. Entonces, Will vivía en Las Palmas, Gran Canaria, que también es un lugar muy típico para nómadas digitales. Entonces, como para escapar el invierno europeo horrible, se fue para Las Canarias, como muchas otras personas hacen. And at Medellin, it's something I, you know, I heard about Medellin from the people who are in Las Palmas. Yeah. And, uh, and in 2019, I met my partner, who is, uh, who is a paisa. My partner who is a paisa. Alguien que es paisa es de Medellín, Colombia, o de Antioquia, que es una región aquí en Colombia. Entonces, su esposa es de aquí, de Colombia. Y la conoció en Londres, porque ella fue a Londres a estudiar inglés. Uh, mira qué pasa. And, uh, and in 2019, I met my partner, who is, uh, who is a paisa. Yeah. When she was in uh, London studying English. Oh, really? Yeah. And then she came back here. And uh, I thought, well, I've heard about many in this call. Yeah. So, so I came in 2019. I came in 2019. Vine en 2019. Came es el pasado de come, venir. Yo vine, I came. 2019. Cuando son los años recientes, 2000 algo, separamos los números en medio. Decimos 2019 en lugar de 2019. ¿Por qué? Porque es más rápido, más corto. So I came in 2019, you know, for Christmas and to see the lights and we kind of spent time with her and we went around and then um, and then the pandemic hit and I thought I do not want to be stuck in a lockdown in the UK when it's cold and it's winter and it's, it's horrible. Absolutely. And, um, Medellin has, the, you know, we'd like that's Palmas in Grand Canary has perfect climate. And you love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't plan to be here that long. No. So I kind of didn't move with all my stuff. I just kind of moved with like thinking oh, I'll be here for six months I'll go back and I just didn't. Yeah. And uh, started building my life here. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I think it's so cool that if you're able to speak English or Spanish, 
two of the most important languages in the world. If you are, if you have that capability, you can educate yourself and you can become valuable to companies and work remotely. If you're not, I feel like it's a fantastic time to be alive because you're not dependent on a place anymore. If you have the skills. Yeah, you, you can be really productive working remotely. You, yes. you know, I'm not stuck on a tube in London. I'm not stuck in a tube in London. No estoy en el metro rodeado de muchísima gente en Londres. En Londres, para transportarse, mucha gente toma el metro. The tube suele estar muy lleno. I'm not stuck on a tube in London going to an office. And it's exactly. like it's, you kind of come in and you kind of stress from the journey. You know? Exactly. Like here you just start work straight away. It's yes. fantastic. And I think if you if you align the you, the company goals with the um, with how you pay your employees as well, or if you if you align your interests, it works really well. Like my entire team is remote, yeah. and it works perfectly. Yeah. Uh, we used to have an office, but you know, as you know, Latin Americans very social. You know, they would you know we would talk a lot, so we yeah. weren't very productive. Right. Right. And then we would just basically say, okay, now everyone's going to work from home. Yeah. Uh, we're going <laughs> to save this office cost, and uh, we just ever since then have been so much more productive. Yeah. And people are aligned with the company goals because they, the, the, the more they contribute, the more results they bring into the company, the, 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 more, the more they're paid. And so that, that helps us not to have to micromanage people, yeah. but to let them do their thing and let the results speak for themselves, basically. Yeah. So I think that's, that's nice. I think it's nice. I think what I liked about uh, Las Palmas and the co-workings, Coworkings, oficinas de coworking, donde mucha gente independiente, emprendedores vienen y trabajan en un espacio de muchas otras personas iguales. Entonces, él estaba trabajando en un lugar así en Las Palmas, Gran Canaria, y ahí conoció mucha gente también. I think it's nice. I think what I liked about uh, Las Palmas and the coworkings is that everyone would go there. You know, you share an office space, but you're not the same company. Yeah. And everyone does so many different kinds of jobs. I think a lot of a lot of people are computer programmers, so yes. you have to do that work really well, which is kind of, I've taught myself JavaScript since I've been here. I have taught myself. Yo he enseñado a mí mismo. Taught es el pasado del verbo teach, enseñar. Un verbo irregular. Y en el pasado decimos taught. I taught, yo enseñé. I taught myself, yo enseñé a mí mismo. I've taught myself JavaScript since I've been here, so I know a lot oh, really? like database stuff now. Yeah, which is really good. Yeah. Um, how's your How's your Spanish? Oh, my Spanish. <laughs> I see. This is the one tricky thing. It's like I should have. Uh, I my company. I work for an English company, so yes. um, I'm not speaking Spanish every day. My partner, you know, we met in England. We speak a mixture of Spanish and English. Okay. Uh, she understands me. I understand her. I have no idea if my Spanish is any good, but we kind yeah. of get on. You yeah, know, we just understand each other. It's definitely a Spanglish. Spanglish. Spanish. English. Combinados. It's definitely a Spanglish kind of language <laughs> that we speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could be improved. So I think once I kind of I kind of felt always like, oh yeah, I have to learn Spanish. Yeah. Where can I do that? Yeah. So yeah, maybe I should have a look and try and find somewhere. I don't know. Well, you can learn with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good, a good way place to start. Yeah. So I would like to ask you a little bit about your your experiences here, or just yeah, in Spanish speaking culture in general. Like, what has been your biggest challenge integrating with people here, or have you had any any experiences that are memorable, um, culture shocks and things like oh, that? I don't know. As uh, I I feel like as, as it's difficult. To, I'm thinking whilst I'm talking and I'm stalling for time for my brain to kick in. I'm thinking whilst I'm talking. Estoy pensando mientras hablo. En Inglaterra usan mucho whilst. Mientras en Estados Unidos usamos más while. I'm thinking while I'm talking. I'm thinking whilst I'm talking and I'm stalling for time for my brain to kick in. But yeah. I feel like I'm quite, a, I'm quite an accepting person. Like I'm quite an easygoing person. Yeah. I'm an easygoing person. Easygoing quiere decir relajado. I'm an easygoing person. Soy una persona relajada. Person, like I'm quite an easygoing person. Yeah. So it's difficult to, um, for things to, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know the challenges. Like we do, I, yeah, I do a lot of stuff with my partner. I like to go, I like, um, love the nature here. I think that's the other thing about Colombia. It's got more uh, species of bird than any other country in the world. Yes. And so I've gone with like this guy I met from university who's a professor. He would take me on trips to see, like we'd go up really early and go and see these incredible birds. Yeah. Uh, Real Medellin and Jardín as well. Yes. Um, 
I find I find people. It's the you know you have people like you to greet them. There's a there's a formal process. Yes, like you have to say good good afternoon, good morning, good evening. How are you? That's kind of a thing before you even start to have a conversation. And don't do that. It's being rude. You know. I, yes. I, I love that. Yeah. At first, I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> because everyone was texting me, hey, Kale, how are you doing? Hola, Kale, como estas? And I'm like, please, get to the point. Yeah. <laughs> get to the point. Llega al punto, ve al grano. Please, get to the point. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're working, we, we both know. Yeah. But now it's like, I kind of like it. It's it's nice. It's They, they have that, that, that touch of, I don't know, they're, they're very loving people. Yes. And, and you speak French. I speak French. So I went to a French primary school in London. Okay. Le Lycée Francais Charles de Gaulle, uh, which was because I have family in France. Okay. In Haute Savoie and uh, Switzerland. Okay. And um, my mother went to the school and she thought it was a good way to learn French when you were young. Yeah. And I went there as well as, as my brother did. And it was great. I, I loved it. It was a, a big school, like 3,000 kids in the primary and secondary. Kids, niños. Más casual que decir children, que también significa niños. Kids. It was a, a big school, like 3,000 kids in the primary and secondary. Yeah. Over 100 different nationalities. So yeah. a really multicultural place, much like London. I think kind of London's very multicultural. So you kind of, you, you want to make a distinction between London and the rest of England in that sense. Um, Okay. J'ai toujours été jaloux de des autres gars qui parlent cour couramment le français parce que c'est une langue très séduisante. Ah oui, mais c'est vrai. J'ai ouais. une, une fois un ami de Paris qui m'a lu une étiquette de dentifrice et c'était la chose la plus sexy que j'ai jamais entendue. Ah, <laughs> c'est um, very good. Très bien, très bien. <laughs> Uh, my, my French is terrible. I'm still, I'm still working on it. Aquí dije, siempre he sido envidioso a todos los hombres que hablan francés fluidamente porque es un idioma muy seductor, muy sensual. Y también dije que una vez tenía una amiga de París que me leía la etiqueta de una pasta de dientes que ella había traído de Francia. Esto fue en Suecia. Y cuando leía los ingredientes de la etiqueta, yo estaba así. Era lo más sexy que había escuchado en mi vida. Francés es uno de los idiomas que más me encanta. Es un idioma muy difícil de aprender porque tiene tanto la gramática compleja como el español, muchísimos diferentes tiempos verbales. Y también es un idioma poco fonético, como el inglés, donde una palabra se puede escribir de una forma y ser pronunciado totalmente diferente, como esta palabra. Bordeaux. Bordeaux? What? Es como Bordeaux. No. Pero ahí voy, ahí voy, poco a poco estudiando francés, igual como ustedes aprenden inglés en el curso. No, es good, you get, I mean, lact, I think the thing is, when you, uh, l'axel, c'est la plus dure de apprendre. Alors, quand tu es très jeune, très petit, yeah. j'ai la chance de devoir apprendre français très petit pour l'axel. Now it's terrible, now I'm actually losing my accent, I never yeah. speak French anymore, and, I did, and this was one of the... Um, The, the things like I didn't, we didn't speak French at home. Like yeah. dad was English, he didn't speak French. So I was kind of going to a French school. Yes. Everything's in French and uh, we're speaking English at home. So I kind of, so I switched to like my mom did, like my brother, we switched to English secondary schools. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the French thing. So when I actually, when I, before I went to Uganda, I did like uh, three months um, working at Harrods to earn a bit of money yes. before we went traveling. Harrods, el mall o el centro comercial más grande en Londres, super conocido. Um, working at Harrods to earn a bit of money yes. before we're traveling. And there you have your name badge and you have the flags of the countries that you speak. Ah, uh, right? yes. Because there's a lot of tourists at no, no Harrods. Tourists. So if they see that you have like French flags, they can speak to you in French, they can feel comfortable, they can understand what they're going to say. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the, the the best combo was French and Italian. Like if you speak more than one language, you have two flags. Yes. And I was like, if you wanted to be, you know, impress the ladies, and um, which, which I did, age 19. Uh, <laughs> I so I I learned so I used to have so I had this glamorous job in Harrods of, and they don't do this anymore. But they used to um, charge people a pound to use the bathroom to go to the loo. Go to the loo. L O O. En Inglaterra se refieren al baño como el loo. To go to the loo, ir al baño. To use the bathroom, to go to the loo. Okay. It's outrageous. Yes. But that's what they did. And there were a few exceptions. So there was, uh, you know, if, you, if you'd spent more than 100 quid, you could go for free. If you'd been to a restaurant, you could go for free. Yeah. Uh, Harrods account card, you could go for free. Yeah. And uh, this really nice Italian lady who had, a, who had a crush on taught me this whole spiel in Italian. Spiel. 
charla. The Italian lady taught me this spiel. La mujer italiana me enseñó esta charla en italiano. And uh, this really nice Italian lady who had, a, who had a crush on taught me this whole spiel in Italian. And I went to the manager and said, look, I can speak Italian. We can say all this in Italian. Yeah. Uh, and he said, can I have the Italian flag too? I was like, yeah, sure. I have a French Italian flag. Yeah. And all this stuff. And of course, it got me into trouble one day. <laughs> so, uh, this nice guy came up and I said, I can remember some of it. Si paga una stellina, no si paga una stellina, si se estate al restaurante, si se spendi puiti cento stellina. Mm, yeah. It's one of those pieces. And he was like, He understood me perfectly. So I only said in Italian, and I didn't understand any of this. My, uh, the Italian lady was working opposite, and she translated for me afterwards. And he said, oh, I've been to the restaurant, but the receipt's in the bottom of my bag, and I, I really don't want to get it out, and I just need to go to the loo. Yeah. And I thought, you know, we, we had a lot of people come up and try to blank their way in. We had a lot of people who were trying to blank their way in. Teníamos muchas personas que trataron de entrar al baño sin pagar. Blank es como blanco o sin color, pero también puede significar tachar. Entonces trataron de tacharse hacia el baño. No tiene sentido en español, pero to blank yourself in to the bathroom quiere decir entrar al baño sin pagar. Well, I thought, you know, we, we had a lot of people come up and try to blank their way in and give of excuses. Course. So we were kind of, oh, he's just trying it on. He doesn't want to pay a pound. It's just a pound. I know, in hindsight. Pounds. En Inglaterra utilizan pounds, libras, no dólares. Oh, he's just trying it on. He doesn't want to pay a pound. It's just a pound. I know, in hindsight. I don't know why. I don't again. Like, I don't know why people do this. It's like it's not an important job. It's like just let the guy go to the loo. I mean, whatever. But I didn't. No. Uh, I made him pay, uh, and I, I regret that because he just then got really upset with me after, oh. understandably. Oh. And, uh, and you know, his wife came out from the loo opposite, and they were kind of like, you know, I shouldn't have done that. So I can okay, well, that was it. I went back to having just the French flags the day after because it was. I was I was shunned that I didn't impress the Italian lady who I was trying to impress because she heard all of this. It's <laughs> oh, embarrassing. Not working, so it was embarrassing. Yeah, I think that I, I like embarrassing moments. You don't like them in the moment, but afterwards you kind of look back at them and you can you can laugh a little. Yeah, because you got to be humble learning a language. Escucha esta característica en el inglés. Yo dije you have to be humble when learning a language. Tienes que ser humilde al aprender un idioma. Y él respondía, you do have to be humble. Eso es como decir, tú sí tienes que ser humilde. Enfatizando el hecho de que sí tienes que ser humilde. Because you gotta be humble learning a language. Like, right, yeah, I didn't go much further with my Italian, no. to be honest. But you do have to be humble. You, you're going to make mistakes. I think, yes, as long as um, people can see the humor and, and the mistakes that you make, then, yeah. that's, then that's all good. Yeah, I think that's one of the main, like, one of the, one of the main fears that a lot of my audience, a lot of people in my audience have, and that is the fear of speaking and making mistakes, especially in English, because it, nowadays it's so important to speak English and it's so correlated with your status and things like that. So people feel a little bit ashamed when they don't speak English. Yeah. So I, I think, what would you say to them? Well, I think it's based uh, on your experience. I, mean, I know it's nice. I heard the other day, I don't know if you know, it has an um, actor, comedian called Eddie Izzard or Uh, I think it's changed his name to, to Susie Izzard, but um, he was saying the thing with English is an open source language, right? It's like open source program and anyone can access the code. Yes. You can go in and like, my English is going to be, not be the same as Australian English, it's not going to be the same as Canadian English or US English or Nigerian English, whoever you want to do it. Yeah. And I think it's that thing of each each culture, each people takes ownership of the language. Yes. And uh, I think that's totally fine. That's how it should be. And I, I, I don't, um, the pedants. The pedants. P-E-D-A-N-T. Los pedantes son las personas que son muy preocupados por los pequeños detalles en cada cosa. En el idioma, por ejemplo. Uno no tiene que preocuparse tanto por sus errores, sino por comprender y hacer que la otra persona te comprenda. Eso es lo más importante, chicos. Don't um, the pedants who say, oh, you shouldn't say this, or this is how you say it. Oh, my God, they get under my skin. I mean, yes. It's like just... Language is evolves like everything else, yeah. you know, and it will constantly evolve, yes. constantly change. Yeah, and you you know you keep up with the changes, and dictionaries evolve. Dictionaries have words that change over the years. Exactly, you know? it's like so. People, in the, I, I, that's something I don't particularly like about the English culture is we kind of think we feel like we own the language. Yes, well, like let it go. It's yeah, like it's, it's as you know, an open source language. Everyone can yeah. pick it up and do what they want with it. And yes. Try to learn some other languages. Yes, you know, exactly. Like English people. Exactly. I, I think that's a, a key to take home or like a, a lesson to take home. And that is, if you're learning English and you already speak your first, your native language, 
let's say that's Spanish, you're probably already doing more than the person you're speaking with. That person right. might not even be learning a second language, and you are. So the yeah. fact that you are, you know, putting yourself out there, learning a new language is just amazing. Absolutely. You should be proud of that, and you shouldn't be ashamed. And I also think, I don't know, I speak for myself, but I think you would agree that if someone speaks to me in my native language, I love that. Yeah. And I would, I'd love to keep the conversation going, helping them, teaching them stuff. I would never laugh at them. Yeah. The only people who would laugh at them would be other people from their country who do not even speak the language. Right, yeah. And, but, so, and I think more, you know, more romantically than that, to speak another language is to have a second soul. To speak another language is to have a second soul. Hablar otro idioma es tener otro alma. To speak another language is to have a second soul, right? So yes. kind of, you, you, know, you think differently, you feel differently, you construct sentences differently. And yeah. I think that all reflects a different way of thinking, a different way of perceiving the world. Yes. And I think that's a beautiful thing to have. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yes. Do I have any more points on that? I, was, I had something else to say and it's gone out of my brain, but... Um, that's a really good point. I, I feel like when I'm back home in Sweden, talking to my friends, my family, I feel like I have a different personality. Yeah, completely. Than what I have in Spanish. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of the language, the culture, whatever it is, but it just feels like I can express myself very differently in the languages. Yes. And uh, that's cool. Yeah, it is. It is. It is, definitely. So let's, let's, um, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. To wrap is envolver. Let's wrap this up. Vamos a envolver esto. Vamos a cerrar esto. Vamos a terminar. Es lo que estoy diciendo aquí. So let's, let's, um, let's wrap this up. I would like, because you have learned French. Mm -hmm. You have, you're a native English speaker and you're now learning Spanish. Mm -hmm. What would you, let's say that, let's, what would you give as advice for all the people watching this who are learning a, a, a second language like for the first time, they're learning English, they haven't learned another language. Any tips or advice or anything you would say to them to encourage them or motivate them to, to keep going? I think, I think the thing I like most about learning a language is being able to visit other places and meet new people and understand new people. I, yeah. And um, I like the immersive approach to learning a language. Like if you're going somewhere trying to immerse yourself and what's going on and speak to the, speak to people who are actually from that place. I think that's great. I think, yeah, it's, it's I was no, speaking personally, I think because I, it's something I've always, um, I went to a multicultural school, as I said, and then when I was going to Las Palmas, I'm meeting people from all over the place. So I think that's, because there's so much sharing and learning you can do from other yeah. people. And it just feels, it feels nice. You feel like you're not, you're opening your horizons yes. to, to other things and other experiences. Yeah. Um, and there's, it's, I think that's really important. I think it's important in terms of understanding other people. I think if we could all be more tolerant, we could all try to understand other people's point of view. I think it's very difficult sometimes to understand other people's points of view. Yes. Um, as a lot can get lost in translation, right? Absolutely. When mixing up words and whatever. Um, so I think it's important for enriching yourself. I think one of the things that the, the cultural diet I talked about for acting, I think one of the things was, um, you know, it's like reading books, but also traveling is a yeah. big thing. Learn another language because you, you, you broaden your, yourself. Yes. You broaden your experiences and what you can do in life. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do a little section here with tongue twisters. Tongue twisters. Trabalenguas. We're going to do a little section here with tongue twisters. So Will has a few of his favorite tongue twisters ready for us that we're going to practice here. <laughs> so yeah, this is from my acting background. So before you go on stage, you want to warm up your mouth. Okay. And uh, make sure you're articulating properly. So yes. the first thing we would say as actors like a good one was um, articulatory agility is a desirable ability. Manipulating with dexterity the lips, the teeth, and the tip of the tongue. Articulatory agility is a desirable ability. Manipulating with dexterity the lips, the teeth, and the tip of the tongue. Right. Holy shit. <laughs> so you go, that's the first kind of a good one. But my, my big thing as a, um, as a person, really, is I'm very bad at pronouncing my ING's. So ing, yes. managing. I will say managing, not managing. Exactly. Right? I, I shouldn't. I should say managing. But yeah. the right way to do it. Yes. So uh, the tongue twist I used to do, which was, um, she stood upon the balustrade of balcony, inexplicably mimicking him hiccuping whilst amicably welcoming him in. She stood up on the balustrade. Blah, 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 blah. I'm out of practice, but that's that's not. And the oh, there's another one which said, uh, "Imagine an imaginary mana, imagine an imaginary menagerie manager, manage an imaginary menagerie." <laughs> that's amazing. 
I, I the tongue twisters that I use in my course because tongue twisters are great. Right. Not not just for preparing yourself to be more articulate, but also to practice pronunciation. Yes. Sounds like, for example, the TH sound, which is a sound that doesn't exist in many languages like Spanish, for example. Okay. So the tongue twister that we use is, I thought I thought of thinking of thanking you. Oh, nice. Nice. That's a good one, right? That's a good one. Yeah, a good one. Maybe uh, I'm not the pheasant. Yeah, it's a f. It's a rather than a f. Rather than a f yeah, there, are, there are two TH sounds. Right, yeah. So it's the TH sound that is voiced and the unvoiced yeah. one. So the vo the voiced one is in thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, thinking, yeah. those type of words. And then there is a th, which is th, those, for example, right. those, these. That's yeah. also a TH sound, but it's in, it's, that's the voiced one. And the other one is unvoiced. I don't know. Yes, one way around. Yeah. Well, one way around, right? Voice is only we don't play a your vocal cord. Exactly. Yeah. It's voiced is with your vocal cord. Yeah, so unvoiced. those and these yeah. are voiced. Yeah. Because the sound comes from the throat, yes. right? Whereas, thanks comes th yes, right. come, th come th from the mouth. Yes. <laughs> now they're using the vocal cord. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the the word I was going to say was, uh, I'm not the pheasant plucker. I'm the pheasant plucker's son, and I'm only plucking pheasants till the pheasant plucker comes. Oh my God. But that's a kind of th it's kind of got some th sounds rather than a uh, yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're welcome. There you have a challenge, guys. <laughs> See if you can learn them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Will. Thank you so much for taking your time. Ok, super bien. ¿Cómo te fue? Espero que te haya gustado esta conversación y que haya sentido que te ha dado un poquito de aprendizaje. Cuéntame en los comentarios, ¿qué pensaste de esta conversación? ¿Algún invitado de algún país que de pronto te gustaría ver aquí en las entrevistas conmigo? ¿Algún tema en específico que te interesa mucho? Y no olvides regalarme un like para ayudarme en mi trabajo hacia mi visión de un Latinoamérica donde no hay una sola persona que no hable inglés. Ahora, si quieres seguir mejorando tu inglés, recuerda que tenemos una prueba de dos semanas de mi curso de inglés. Dentro del curso, enseño a través de historias interactivas. Es muy parecido a aprender a través de conversaciones. Y además, tenemos grupos conversacionales y profesores privados que te ayudan en tu proceso de aprendizaje. Y puedes probar todo durante dos semanas sin compromiso. Si no te gusta por cualquier motivo, te devolvemos tu dinero para que te sientas cómodo, para que no haya ningún riesgo con tu compra y puedes tomar una decisión informada. Te voy a dejar el enlace a la prueba aquí abajo en la descripción del video. Y de todos modos, espero que te haya gustado el video. Cuídate muchísimo y nos vemos en los siguientes.